Hi everyone, we're back. <laughs> Annalise is photobombing our video right now. Anyway, so we are back. Lots of exciting updates in the Race Across America. This is a truly exciting race. Um, one disappointing thing, um, or I don't know if disappointing is the right word, but uh, unfortunate thing is Mark Pattison dropping out. Shermer's neck. So we posted the video of that yesterday, or not the video, we showed the picture of that yesterday, but what that is with a muscles fatigue. And he could, uh, I saw an update that he, he could tell it was just beginning. It wasn't even really all that bad, but he knew, he knew from previous experience that it was going to prevent him from catching Pierre and he was in this to win it. And he's already gotten second, uh, I think at least once. And so he just decided, it was not worth the risk of permanent damage or anything to continue on. So, Mark Pattison DNF, which by default moved Dave Haas up into second, although I think he would have gotten there anyway, because as you can see, Dave Haas's slope here, he has pulled ahead of Marco. And Marco um, is still riding strong in third, but Dave is starting to put a little bit of distance. And you can see his slope here. This is probably the most important thing to look at is this slope. It's going to intersect with Pierre's slope at some point if Dave's able to keep that up and Pierre continues on at his current um, pace. But the question is, will it be before or after um, the end of the race? I'll go check on what's going on. Yeah, why on earth are the kids are vacuuming something right now? Um, but in any case, that's what's going on right at the front of the race. Exciting race. Definitely going to be exciting to watch Dave and Pierre battle it out as they come through here. One factor, one potential factor in that is the weather. So it was very hot in Kansas and it got started to get very hot. But now there is some storms. In fact, there's a lot of storms going on right now. And we've seen lots of pictures of Dave riding in the rain today. Potential for severe weather tonight. Uh, today into tomorrow as well so that'll be interesting to see if that plays an impact in the race right now just give you a, a, a more concrete update Pierre as in is at 2,698 miles, and Dave Haas is 225.64. Ooh, so that's slippered a little bit. So I, I looked this morning, it was at around 150 miles se separated. Then I looked a little bit later, it was 140 miles, and he had it down to 132. And at the moment, it's back up to 134 miles. So Pierre has 134 mile lead. Um, what that means, Pierre is only like 300 and... Yeah. This is close. 70 miles from the finish. Yeah, I think mean, roughly, because I think this year's race is a bit longer than last year because of routing issues in Arizona. So I think this race is going to be... amazing. Yeah. He's, so I, I don't know if Dave has enough time to catch him, but we're certainly rooting for him. be interesting to see if he can do it. Exciting to see him do it. I just clicked on the projections tab. When you do that, you can scroll all the way over to the... <laughs> Which I can use it. Since my laptop. Uh, I had no idea what was going on there. You can scroll all the way over to the very left and it'll show you the predicted time. So anything that's in italics here is a predicted time. So uh, that's, he's, uh, Pierre's already crossed these time stations. Dave hasn't made it to those. Is he two time stations behind? Yeah, so Dave is uh, two time stations behind roughly, well, like we said, 134 miles. So, um, but the predicted finish then for, Pierre's nine hour, nine days, eight hours. For Dave, nine days, nineteen hours. Now this is not accurate because this is based on his total average speed, which includes that you know what was it, fifteen hour delay, the fifteen hour stop where he was battling. Um, was it? This is long. His lungs, yes. Which he was in the hospital battling problems with his lungs, trying to figure out what was going on. He got the okay to race, and he's been racing much faster. But that's not factored into this estimate here. Um, I'm sure this estimate is based on his total average speed. So this number will be coming down. And that's the million-dollar question is will it come down by 
11 hours. And so you're saying Piers is based on a fairly, very fairly steady, steady yes. average. Yes, she's been very while steady. While Dave's average has gone up and down. So. Yeah. Yeah. So we feel like this is a fairly accurate number unless he slows down. I can't imagine it being much faster than this. Although I do remember from, from my own race that I got faster towards the end because I was so excited to be um, done. <laughs> so, and I love the terrain too. All right, so um, that's the very front of the race. My friend Eric is doing well. I uh, got some, an update here related to the weather. Fierce crosswinds in Illinois. I uh, saw a comment here, um, as well as terrible roads with crappy shoulders. This road should be reevaluated. I totally remember Illinois. It was definitely the worst roads of the race in terms of condition. And, it's because of the cracks, the cracks they get because of the rough winters and all that. But um, yeah, it's miserable. I remember it being very, very miserable through here. But Eric is soldiering on. He's doing really well. If we want to look at his position related to the other people in his category, so 50 to 59, he is doing well. That is a very tight, tight race. The Honey Badger is clearly in the lead. I think he's got that pretty much wrapped up unless something happens. Um, but the honey badger is, uh, oh, ooh, speaking of something happened, that's quite a long, oh, that's right. He's sticking with his plan of these crazy long stops where he has these long oh, wow. sleeps. Look at, look at how people are. Yeah, but he's done that. He's done that before. Look at that long mm -hmm. sleep gets passed by people and then just blows by them again. And I, I remember from my, my race as well that I did it wasn't necessarily long sleeps like that, but it was a very discouraging feeling to to be ahead of someone, sleep, and then they pass you while you're sleeping. That's funny because when you would wake up and you'd ask where people were, I sort of didn't even want to tell you because I just wanted you to get on the bike and ride yeah. because eventually everybody has to stop yeah. and it's going to sort itself out if you just ride your bike as hard as you can. Right. But those mental games when you are literally on the bike pedaling and you have nothing else to think about, I yeah. suppose you need to have your mental games to play, right? Yeah. But in any case, he's probably going to wake up and start riding again before these guys even catch him. So I'm pretty sure he's got this locked up. But of course, anything can happen to him. But he's doing well, sticking to his strategy. Um, Eric down here is, is, is leading this group of riders here. Um, but a little bit behind these other two guys who are sitting. Those guys are all 6th, 7th, and 8th. Eric himself has moved all the way up to the 18th. Now, part of the reason for that moving up has been DNFs. So with the humidity, the heat, uh, it sounds like the weather has been a bit rougher for these guys on the east side of the country this year. Um, Kansas, they mentioned heat, humidity a lot. And then Missouri, heat, humidity. Uh, and it started to cool off for us. But in any case, the two big DNFs to report are at the front of the race. So Mark Pattison, who is sitting there between Dave and Pierre, DNF'd, oh, as I mentioned, with the Shimmer's neck. Um, I forgot I already mentioned that. And then also at the front was um, Gerhard Gulowitz, which a little bit of controversy as far, I mean, of course, we, we're just we, reading we this off of speculate. Facebook, so we don't know for sure what all happened, but, um, he uh, definitely pulled out of the race. Um, Early this morning. Yeah. Earlier. And he was in the top ten. He was the top 10. fourth. fourth. Yeah. Fifth now. He had moved to he had moved down to fifth. I think he had been all the way up to second at one point. But he moved down to fifth behind Dave and Marco and then pulled out. And then Ray? Ray Brown. So Ray Brown was doing well, plugging along in the fifty to fifty nine race, but Missouri must have gotten to him the heat, humidity, um, and, and yeah, and all the hills, the roads. And so he pulled out earlier today. Unfortunate for him, but sometimes there's nothing else he can do. Kudos to everyone who is still in the race. Eric, you're doing great. Um, all these guys here. Friend Shusana, who raced the race last year. Um, who, like myself, is not racing it this year, um, has been following the race, and she posted a handy little spreadsheet earlier today. Um, 
related to the first hard cutoff. So the first hard cutoff um, is the Mississippi River. And uh, Eric, most of the people I've mentioned are already past the Mississippi River, but several hours ago there was people who were near the Mississippi or nowhere near it, and she posted the speeds that they needed to make to, to ride in order to make the cutoff. Um, some of them, like Shauna, Shauna Hogan, also mentioned while mentioning her, she is on track to set six or seven records. She can continue on at her current pace. Um, Definitely going to win the 50 to 59. I believe she was actually the only category in that, that um, the only entry in that category. But still, that would make her a seven time winner, having won the regular women's race under 50 six times in a row. She is definitely trying to hunt down Nicole, who is currently leading the under 50 race. Um, but of course, that's a different category, so it is possible for them both to win. Um, but in any case, the number of records she's going to set based on her age now. So she's the fastest. Fast so there's a good article right here. Can uh, Shauna catch Nicole? We do the math. So that was an interesting article. And yeah. in short, they said probably not. But like we said, in RAM, anything can happen. Yeah. So You're moving back up to here, though. Um, clearly, there are some people who are not going to make the cutoff. This guy has to average. Ricardo has to average 77 miles an hour, 77.9 miles an hour, and um, 67 miles an hour. So those those people are unlikely to make the cutoff. Um, actually, I think I might have emailed him back and forth a couple of times. Uh, he asked me questions about the race. Uh, so that's unfortunate, but they have made it a long ways, no matter what. Even if they DNF right now, they've made it a long ways. Now, about that, this is, I said hard cutoff, but if you're within an hour or so, they're going to let you keep on going. Um, but at some point, they do cut it off if you are way outside. Because the deadline to get to Maryland right. is what? 12, 12 and a half days, I think, or basically 8 p.m. or midnight. I don't think it's midnight. I think it's like 8 p.m. Yeah. Got to be there by 8 p.m. on Sunday, which ends up being like 12 and a half, or less than a half, 12, 12 days and change. Um, yeah. Well, this was good. Yeah. This was good. We'll have to, we'll bring you the news tomorrow. Yeah. But exciting race. If you are not, if you're following these videos, but not following the race for some reason, you should go to racecrossamerica.org slash live dash tracking.html. And you can do like I have all day, just keep on hitting refresh. <laughs> and, uh, you know, periodically you can see the progress. All right. Well, that's it for now. We're going to say goodbye. Again, nobody's taking us up on this offer, but. Leave a question in the comment, and we will address Except it for Luke. in Luke's the next. All kinds of Hell yeah, yeah! People are making comments. Luke's making comments. Yeah, people are definitely seeing the video, but nobody's asking questions. So ask us questions, anything, um, and we'll address it. How sore in the was next your butt video. this time last year? I had some saddle sores. Like like the muscles in my butt were not sore at all. I don't think I don't remember that, but but I definitely had some some pretty bad saddle sores. You get to the point where changing kits is a nightmare. Uh, you just, you have to do it, but you don't want to do it. You don't want to put on those clothes again. And, um, yeah. You put on all your layers of goo. Yes. Stuff. Thanks to her. She, miraculous. This is what you really miraculous. want to know. There should be yeah. a TMI warning at the beginning of this video. Yeah, definitely. No, that's as much as we'll give you. It's a nasty <laughs> job, but it has to be done. And it gets yeah. people across the country. It does. It does. So I got some plans. Dermaplast. Yeah. This yeah. is one of the only times that men will use dermaplast. Well, every, any woman that's watching will know exactly what it is. Yeah. All right. That's it. And on that note, we'll see you tomorrow. Bye. Bye, everyone.